and let's get going with the grip. So we want the continental grip. The number one thing that I see when players come to me and they say like, wow, my volley is kind of iffy, is the grip. So I know it's a difficult grip for some to master, but I'm telling you for your longer term development, it is so crucial that you have the proper grip. Uh, grip. So how do we find our continental grip? As usual, we want to see, and I'm coming a little closer, the underside of your index finger knuckle and the meaty part of your palm, the heel pad here. If you draw a line between these two points, they want to rest on your number two bevel. And you start from the top, that's your number one, and then two is the next one over. Of course, for a right-hander, um, that is going over to your right. For a left-hander, you would do it the other way around, but it's the same bevel, bevel number two. So I'll find my grip right here. Another way to find it is if you just take your hitting hand, non-dominant hand holds on to the racket here, and you slide down with a V-shaped form of your hand. You should rest on the same bevel. And it feels a little bit like a hammer, right? So what you don't want is to have the index finger knuckle and the heel pad on that flatter and bigger bevel of your racket, right? That's when we get into that frying pan grip and that's very, very limiting. So again, let's get into our continental grip. Second thing is your ready position. Ideally what you want is just a good athletic ready position. And I like to have the butt cap about a finger width away from my belly button. Slide bend in my elbow, racket face is above the wrist at all times. I'm always coming back into this position. And the left hand, for me as a right-hander, is on the throat of the racket. And as a right-hander, we tend to favor over to the backhand side a little bit. So you're rarely really ever exactly like this, which is perfectly fine. Okay, so this is my ready position. Ideally, I'm on the tips of my toes here so that I can move forward to my volleys because that really is key. I don't want to be on my back foot. And by the way, if you like this video, feel free to let me know in the comments and also subscribe if you haven't done yet. So I'm close to a thousand subscribers or maybe by now slightly over, but I want to get to 2000. So help me with that. Anyways, moving on to our regular volleys between shoulder and hip. So the way that I want to prepare is I don't want to take my racket back out of my shoulder. And what I mean by that is I'm taking it way back too far this way. Ideally, I have a little bend in my elbow. Again, I have the racket face above my wrist and I set my racket with a slight upper body turn. So you're still seeing my right shoulder facing you, but my left shoulder comes around a little bit because that allows me to really move towards the direction where I'm wanting to send the ball. So that is really what I want to do. I'm setting my racket here. And if you want to see that from the side, I'm setting my racket in a way that my wrist stays in front of the plane of my body. That's still okay. If I can't really see my racket out of the corner of my eye, it's probably a little too far on a lower volley. On a higher volley, and we'll get into that in another video, you can actually take the racket back a little bit on a higher and slower volley. Okay, so don't forget that. Again, I'm setting out my racket here. I keep my wrist in front of my shoulder here. I have a slight bend, and you notice that the lower edge of my racket is leading, and that's what I want to keep it. That's where I want to keep it. I want to keep it leading. So from the front, it looks like this. I'm turning here and then I stride to my ball. And you see that I'm keeping the lower edge of the racket leading and my racket face is squared up to uh, uh, where I want to go. So again, I got my ready hop and this is it. If somebody is flaming the ball at you, and this is what happens a lot, of course, I don't want to have a big swing. What I'm doing is I'm setting and then I punch through. And I do like the terminology on that one, punching, because punching doesn't go high to low. It's actually going a little bit more shoulder to shoulder. I can also say I want to extend forward. So I'm not letting my racket head drop. Now the left hand, my off hand, actually plays a very distinct role. As I'm turning here, 
my left hand wants to be out here. I don't want to just have it dangling out here. It's almost walking, like walking on a tightrope, right? You want your other hand to help you with the balance. So I'm setting it out and I keep my left hand up here. It's not here, it's not down here. So let's look at it one more time. Turn and hit from the side here and step. And then let's look at it from the side as well. Turn and hit and it's really short. It's a lot of work with your legs, but very little racket work. Right? That's why it looks so easy when top players play their volleys. They don't do much with their hands really. Right? And then from the back, lastly, out here and step through and you punch and extend or extend and hold. Either one you can use of those terminologies. All right, so let's talk about the footwork. Every single good volleyer has fantastic footwork because a volley is all about using your legs to generate power. You will not get good power out of your volley and control if you're swinging. And that's usually what people do when they want to hit a harder volley, they start to swing. But it's again, all coming from the legs. So how do I generate enough stability and control and power with my legs? Now, sometimes with the terminology that we use, um, the cross step, I think we're doing students a um, disservice. Because to me, and it apparently seems to imply to a lot of players that when we say a cross step, players do this. But I want to send my ball into this direction and now I'm completely unstable. So what I want to do instead is I want to try to get my outside leg behind the ball and then drive off from my outside leg and step toward my target because that allows me to send that ball into the direction that my body weight is moving and that is the key. So again, I'm in my ready position and of course this is a volley that hangs right here, really juicy volley. I got my ready hop and you see here now that my body weight is behind the incoming ball and on my outside leg. So here I'm setting my racket and now I can stride in with my inside leg and really get good pop on the ball, but it comes from my legs. One and two. And you see that a little bit more than, of course, when we're rallying some balls. So again, one more time here, boom. Okay, that is where your pop comes from. So let's do it from the side. I got my ready position, and then I step in with my left leg. That, of course, is always true, but I'm not stepping across if I want to send the ball this way. So if I want to send the ball cross court, which is to the right of you right now, if you look at me, this is where I'm stepping. You see here, I'm not stepping across. If I want to go to the left of the camera, so that would be a down the line ball for me, I'm just turning a little bit more. So by setting my upper body, at this point I've already decided where I'm going, and then I drive off from my back or my outside foot, my outside leg. So let's look at it from the back. Now that you got the perspective, if I want to go down the line, this is where I'm going. If I want to go cross court, it's the exact same motion and movement, only that I'm turned a little bit more. And that makes it a lot easier to control rather than doing that. That doesn't make too much sense. Now, how do I have to adjust when the ball's not sitting right there for me to take and I have to move to the ball? Well, I'm still having my outside leg that I want to drive off of and my inside leg to drive through. But what I want to do is after my split step, I may have to move to that ball and then I get my outside leg behind the ball. So it could be something like this. Move, 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 stride and drive in. And those steps before I'm taking my outside leg behind the ball and then striding in with my left are adjustment steps and they help to keep my lower body under my upper body because the last thing that I want to do is this. That's a lot of times when we're leaning over the ball because we're off balance. We didn't get our high knee 
up to the ball. The last thing with the footwork, you are not done when you are having your outside leg behind the ball and then you have that left leg driving in. You still need to continue into the direction that you hit your volley because you want to be ready for the next ball. And again, you want to stay balanced. So if I'm going down the line here, I'm getting to my ball and then I continue a few steps to get into my better second volley position. And that again allows me to stay balanced because again, a lot of times we're doing this. Yes, we've done everything correct. We have our outside leg here and then we tend to hit over the ball and then I get stuck. So you're not done with your left leg step. So I'm moving forward, split and continue to move through. And one player who did that almost in an annoying way was Stefan Edberg. I don't know if you remember him, but what he used to do is he hit the ball and then he had those couple of shuffle steps, but that was just to stay balanced and be ready for the next ball. So I already mentioned it before, you wanna lead with the lower edge of your racket. And to be able to do that, the tip of your racket needs to point to the side. Even on higher volleys, what I don't wanna do is this, because it's too easy to just hit over and down on the ball. And that's what you don't want to do. You still want to have the ability to give the ball some underspin to actually really pull it down again. So make sure that the tip is out to the side and not up here. And a lot of times that has to do with the wrong grip because this feels kind of awkward. This feels better, but it's unfortunately not the right way to address a ball, especially when you get lower volleys because how do I get under lower volleys like this? This is great footwork, but if I'm down here, I can now really control them and not just control them, I can still be aggressive with them. So make sure you have the tip to the side leading with the lower edge. Let me show you from the side. Again, you should now see the tip facing to the camera and the lower edge leading because now I can manipulate low balls and of course, I can also manipulate high balls. Don't want to do this. How firm should I hold my wrist when I am volleying? To my mind, you want to hold your racket so that you have control over your racket face, meaning that your racket face should stay over your wrist. And as you're making contact, they're about level. Right? You don't want to let your wrist drop. The only time you do use your wrist is still you're not letting it drop is for instance, when you really underspin a drop shot volley or when you're carving off a volley, that's when you use your wrist. Other than that, you're really trying to use more of your legs, your arm and your elbow to make sure that you're getting pop on the ball or control over the ball. Now, another thing is if you hold out your hands like this and you let somebody slap on your wrist, your wrist naturally firms up, your hand firms up because that's a protection mechanism your wrist has. And that's the same thing when you're holding on to the racket in a somewhat solid grip, it's only gonna be more tight when the ball's hitting the racket face anyways. Unless you're working with too much, oh, I have to really punch and squeeze and all that kind of stuff. To me, that doesn't help me a whole lot when I'm volleying. So hold it as if you had a tube of toothpaste in your hand, that's open. If you squeeze too tightly, toothpaste is all over the place. And of course, if you hold it too loosely, it drops. All right, so let's take a look at some volleys. Okay, so I'm just gonna um, have Faisal, my friend here, feed me some volleys. And we're working on the ready hop and the footwork, of course, and very little racket work here. So let's make it all about the legs. All right, so here we go. So split, outside leg, and I drive forward. Split, here. And that outside leg step does not have to be fantastically big, but you definitely want to be here and then stride. And I'm making contact on these balls as I'm stepping. So I'm not having my foot down and then I hit. I do it simultaneously. I step and hit at the same time. So split, one, two, split, one, two. All right, I'm going down the line 
and you just see that I'm turning a little bit more. Again, I'm not doing this with my arm. I'm turning. So set and move. Split, move. Ooh, hit that a little late there. Okay, so I'll just alternate a little bit. A couple more balls. One, cross court. Down the line. And one more. And then I had to adjust a little bit. So these were very nice balls, right? They were right in my strike zone. They were right at me. Um, let's work on getting to the balls when they're a little further away. So I'm really trying to, again, have my split step as Faisal make, makes contact, even when he's just feeding. You want to work on that. And then I'm keeping my legs under my body until I have my outside leg behind the ball, and then I stride in. And I also want to do a good job continuing to move into the direction of the ball. All right, so I'm starting here. So I'm moving. It was a little lower, but I have to get there. So I'm moving. All right, I'm getting there with one big lunge. That's okay. But you saw how I really got my right foot then behind that ball and stride forward. So I'm moving. Now I get my outside leg behind the ball. So move, 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 right, left. And I continue one or two steps. And I'll now go cross court. So move, 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 right, left. And then I would shift my direction over to cover that ball. 